you know, if you make more money and you're overweight or you're struggling with your marriage, what good is being a millionaire? Like it's, it's none at all. So in other words, the goals really need to cover all aspects of your life, not just a part of it. So this, these are some of the reasons I've noticed for me personally and others where goals just really don't work. why goal setting typically does not work. New Year's resolutions. The first one is you have a weak why. Okay, a weak why is so important. For example, I'll make it, you know, for example, oh, what do you, why do you want to get into apartment building investing? Oh, I want $10,000 per month. Why is that? Well, that's how much, that's what I'm earning right now. I said, well, well, great. So if you had uh, that much in passive income, why is that important? Right? And they're like, well, you know, well, well, that, that, would, that would allow me to quit my job. I said, great. Well, why would that be important? Uh, well, then I could be at home and, and I, I would have options. I would control my time. I could, I could really do what I wanted to, whether it makes money or not. I said, ah, now we're getting somewhere. Why is that important? Well, and things start getting more difficult because most people don't think about these, these levels, right? But if you keep asking why is that important, you're going to peel back the onions and un reveal really what motivates you. It could be a, a variety of different things. It could be that you can be at home and now you can spend more time with your family because you're, you're, you're watching your, your two young kids grow up and you're missing it or whatever. You're not spending it. You're struggling maybe with your marriage because you're, you're so focused at work, whatever that is, right? You become a better father, a better mother, a, a better spouse. Like, what is it? Right? Really? What is your why? Maybe it's even about something more greater than you. Maybe even about you're greater than, than your, uh, than your family, right? It's, it's maybe that you want to volunteer more. You want to make a difference. We had, we had one guy who wanted to create a, a high school, Right, he was he was uh, he was discontented with the, the public school system. He wanted to create his own high school, but of course, it doesn't pay a lot. He'd have to raise some money, and he didn't wasn't sure what he was going to do. So he got an apartment building investing. Now that's a huge motivator because if he doesn't succeed, he's not going to be fulfilled. He's not going to be impact hundreds of different students in the way they wanted to impact. So what is your why? And and if that's not strong enough, then no goals. I, I don't care how well worded are really not going to really matter. I think that's the biggest thing. There's a few other reasons, though, why New Year's resolutions really don't work. One is they're not strategic, meaning that they're not really linked to intentions and long-term goals. And it could be anything like, you know, I want to be healthy. I want to be generous. Okay, well, what are you doing towards those goals, right? So, so sometimes we just do things because everybody else around us is doing them, or it's the next best easy thing. We're not really thinking intentionally. So they're not really intentional, I think, which is probably fundamental the problem with most goals. And the third thing is there's no follow through because even if we're intentional long-term thinkers, we're not tying them to everyday life and tasks. Maybe you have a task list or a calendar or some system where you get stuff done. Whatever it is for you, if you don't link your long-term goals to those everyday things, you're not going to get them done. You're just going to put them on the board, put them on a shelf somewhere and look at them again next year and like, oh, dag on it, fell through on that. No. You have to link them to everyday tasks. The other thing also is, is something where goals tend to be uh, overwhelming, right? You have this concept of taking massive action. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Who in the world takes massive action? Maybe 4% of the, of, the, of the population. Okay, I am a huge action taker, but massive action exhausts me. Like, it overwhelms me. I'm much more of a tiny action taker. Tiny action means that you're doing a little something every day, and I recommend the same thing to you. We'll talk about how to do that in a second, but philosophically, from a mindset perspective, forget about taking massive action. Really think about uh, taking a little bit of action every single day. Uh, let's see. Also, another thing is that uh, goals tend to be focused on only one part of your life. So when we talk about goal setting, we're typically talking about money, maybe about losing weight or something or quitting smoking. Okay, but it's much more about that. You really have to look at your entire life and living an intentional life across your entire spectrum. So, for example, if you have goals around making money, that's great. Again, why is that important? But, you know, if you make more money and you're overweight or you're struggling with your marriage, what good is being a millionaire? Like, it's it's none at all. So, in other words, the goals really need to cover all aspects of your life, not just a part of it. So, this these are some of the reasons I've noticed for me personally and others where goals just really don't work. So what's the solution? I'll talk about the solution here, things I've figured out over the years. And it really starts, first of all, before I get to my tools <laughs> and methods, it's really around clarity. You know, you, 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 you've heard of this, uh, you know, this, this story where, you know, you're climbing the ladder of success, you know, you're getting the bottom rung, you're, you're, you're just so grateful for the shot and you're, you're struggling and you're getting up there and you finally get to the top of the ladder after years of hard work and you realize the ladder's up against the wrong wall. You never wanted to be there. I mean, that certainly was my path for 
uh, getting into restaurants and losing millions and almost losing my house in the restaurants, I wasn't really clear what I wanted or flipping houses. I thought I wanted to be a real estate investor. What I really wanted though was I wanted financial freedom. And as you know, flipping houses is not really passive income. It's a very active sport. And so I wasn't clear what I wanted. And so I did things without being clear of why I'm doing things. And again, it's this lack of intentionality. We just kind of do stuff just because people around us are doing it, or we just, we're not really intentional. So my advice here before we get into goal setting is really to sit down and create some clarity. And the other key thing about goals is that you wanna go from a high level to the low level. We talked about it earlier. So, so not only do we wanna talk about all parts of our life, that's also important, but we wanna go from the high level, almost like a state of being. How do you wanna be? What kind of person you wanna be like to long-term goals? Because we always overestimate what we can do in a year, we underestimate what we can do in five years. So if I wanna be a generous person, what do, what do I need to do within five years to get to that? that if I want to be live a healthier lifestyle, I got five years to do it, then describe to me what you want to be like in five years. And so that's what you should start with so that when you craft one of your goals, et cetera, you can actually make progress towards that five-year goal. And then, of course, you have to link them to the everyday. So the way that, that I do that is something called the living fully compass. Living fully compass, compass is, is really does all those things. It's actually, if, if, well, you'd be shocked to learn. It's a spreadsheet. I love spreadsheets, but it's a it's a it's a pretty cool spreadsheet. It, it goes from from the longer term to the shorter term. So it really starts with intentions. So the intention could be uh, it could be could be anything. I I want to live a healthy lifestyle so that I can live a healthier life longer. So I'm not a burden on anyone. So I can enjoy my relationships longer, etc. Right? You can say do the th same thing with almost everything. For example, with with uh, income. You want to say, look, I want to achieve uh, financial freedom so that I have options, so I can control my time, so that I can travel more, spend more time with my family. Like, what are your intentions, really? What are my intentions? What, and what do you want to uh, what do you want to be and feel like? Like, if I want to be a generous person my intention is to be a generous person, then that is an intention there as well. And then from that, you craft five-year five year vision. So, so imagine, uh, so around, if I want to become a generous person, like in my case, for example, you know, if you know the love languages, my, my least, you know, my least favorite one is gift giving. Like I, I actually, I enjoy getting gifts. I just suck at giving them. And I've decided, declared a year and a half ago, that I'm gonna get good at giving gifts. I'm gonna be the best gift giver on the planet, okay? So I'm gonna lie myself for a little while until I get better. And I, it was literally an intention under uh, becoming a generous person is I am a fantastic gift giver. <laughs> you can you can state it however you want. You can state it in the present tense or to become a good gift giver or whatever you want to come. So it's an intention. So therefore, my five-year vision, I'm going to describe that I'm a generous person and I'm giving uh, gifts uh, generously and thoughtfully and things of that nature. Then once you have your five-year vision in place, from that you create your one-year goal. So five-year vision, you can probably put the, you can you can go through that, and then from that it really guides your one-year goals. And this is really important because otherwise your one-year goals may not actually serve you uh, in the in the long long run. So what are your one-year goals, right? If I'm if I want to lose weight, let's say I'm overweight, and I'm going to lose 25 pounds uh, or 50 pounds, or the case may be, it may, I may take more than a year to do it. So what am I going to do in the next year? I may want to lose 25 pounds and carefully and thoughtfully, and I want to make small, uh, small changes. So what are your one-year goals for each of the areas in your life? So it's not just work, but it's also your health. It's your relationships. What about your goals and your relationships? And one of the things I've found useful in setting these goals is for each area of your life, and you'll see them, uh, you, you'll be able to download the, the Living Fully Compass. I'll tell you how to get that in a second. You can see the different areas in your life. So we talked about, obviously, your, your income goals, your work goals, uh, relationships, uh, your spirituality, relationships with families, relationships with friends, and uh, your generosity or contribution, your health and well-being, your travel, your recreation, your hobbies, right? Each part of your life, what I found is super helpful is to actually go through and rate them from one to 10. And you might find that, you know, you might be really strong in one category and really poor in one other category. And so as you craft your one-year goals, ask yourself, what is the one thing I can do, one or two things I can do this year to go to increase my score by one point? Okay, whatever that, whatever that case. So with my gift giving, I give myself a four. What do I need to do to get it to a five next year? Or maybe even a six. Like, what are the things I can do? Baby steps on getting that and slowly increasing so that my level of fulfillment goes up in life. And it's a little smoother, right? Like I said before, there's, there's no value in, in, in doing fantastic in income and being a millionaire 
and then you know you're getting a divorce and you're overweight. It's like then you're super. So if you imagine it as a wheel, right, called a life wheel, some people say, and then it's kind of bouncy and it's not smooth, and you know it's kind of hard going. So start with that and see what can you improve to get to the point where you want to go in one year and five years. Now once your one year is one year goals is done, now it's relatively easy now to go down to what I, we call 90 day rocks. So these are kind of these 90 day rocks. Okay, what can I do in this quarter to get me one step closer to that one year goal? And it becomes a lot easier, right? If your goal is to lose weight or, or whatever the case may be, what do I need to do, right? If I wanna do my first deal in the first 12 months and next year, well, that's great. What am I gonna do in the first 90 days, right? I'm, I'm not gonna do my first deal in the first 90 days, but what can I do to get myself closer to that goal? So that's the next step. And once I have a one year, one year goal, my 90 day rocks, the living fully compass essentially is complete.